All right, guys, this is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and I'm here with IP Hawk, uh, another David. I'm David. He's David. Uh, he's in New Jersey. I'm in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and where I found out about IP Hawk through the OGs of, um, of trading, Michael Good and, uh, and others, and White Diamond Research, among other people. And uh, I was first brought, uh, he was first brought to my attention from like the days of uh, the easier pump and dumps. These days it's kind of wild. Uh, but a few years ago, it were a lot easier to, to, to trade them and short sell them because they would have newsletter promotions. And recently, um, I've, I noticed that uh, IP Hawk over here, David, has a substack stack of, um, of all the paid mailers of, uh, of, of the new pump and dumps. So I found that pretty useful. It's, uh, it's, it's great to have um, a resource of all the pump and dumps and all one consolidated like Excel or like, you know, in one format and you can use it to your advantage. I know I, I use it. I've used his uh, email pump and dump, you know, list for my advantage to that when a stock is running and uh, and I'm like, oh, wait a second. IP Hawk had that one in the list. Maybe, you know, that's a, maybe a short opportunity or let me investigate this a little more. So it's, it's very useful. So I asked, I asked David to come on the podcast and he obliged. So here we are. So, so IP Hawk, David, how you doing? I'm doing good. It's uh, raining in New Jersey and glad I got to the office before I beat the rain. Nice, nice. So I don't know, you want to give a little background on yourself, maybe about how you uh, got started a little bit and maybe how, what, what you do exactly with the patents and how you got to the newsletter. For the sure. so, so my background is in auditing and accounting. That's what I did out of college for three and a half, four years. I got really interested in uh, the stock market, 2009, 2010, coming out of the financial crisis. No one really knew that we were coming out of the financial crisis. It's really interesting to hear the different commentary in hindsight, 10 years later, 11 years later. Um, I was essentially making more money investing, trading, than at the accounting firm working 60 hours a week for 10 months a year. So I started investing pretty much full-time in 2010, 2011. Um, I got really interested in patents through a company called Vernetics um, and patent litigation, attending the trials, uh, the Markman hearings, summary judgment hearings, flying to Texas, driving to Delaware, uh, heading to California, kind of the hotbeds of patent litigation. Um, it's kind of flamed out with the inter-party reviews, 2016, 2017 levels, um, but it's kind of really come back with a lot of the litigation financing and a lot of, um, I guess, AI machine learning, looking for better patents to litigate. And a lot of the biotech situations and big pharma situations are uh, really interesting. And you kind of get an edge just going to the trials and going to the hearings because there's not too many people there other than a few other investors and all the attorneys. Wow, great. And uh, so how did you get started with the with the email substack? Like you just collecting all the all the, you know, all the paid mailers that go out? Yeah, so I kept subscribing to all of the paid emails that I guess popped up in my ticker feed. And it was more of a hobby during COVID more than anything. And I would kind of just tweet out, you know, XYZ ticker, $25,000 uncompensated paid promotion going on. Um, kind of to let people know that you know, if the stock is moving, this is why it's probably moving. It's not because there's any important news. It's just a pump and dump newsletters going out. Um, kind of been tracking the progress, when, when to maybe go long them. I haven't really gone long any of them because I think it's stupid. Um, but really looking at it for short opportunities um, and really interested if it has, you know, why they're running the promotional newsletter. A um, couple different factors, probably convertible debt is one of the biggest one. Uh, it's a, I would say it's a lazy way to bring in new investors and companies are kind of taking a shortcut that they'd rather spend, you know, 25,000, 30,000, all the way up to a hundred thousand uh, dollars to send these paid newsletters out instead of hiring a person or the CEO, CFO or just having a good product and you know building awareness with your financial results. I think it's just one big shortcut. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So for example, like BTCY I've seen recently, they, I get like text messages for it and emails for it. And uh, I'm using that as an example because it's been one that's been, they've been sending stuff out. Yeah, non-stop. Yeah, non-stop. non-stop. But it, it's, it's not, it hasn't been moving too much. Now, <clears throat> someone was telling me, we were speculating about it, that, um, that they send these, these uh, mailers out and text messages so like the flow can get smaller little by little by the bag holders that hold it. So then eventually they can run it up big. And that reminded me of like FLGC, which I did a, a I was an, an investigator on earlier a few months ago. And it seemed like that. It seemed pretty nonchalant for a long way. They were pumping it for a few months. And all of a sudden it had this big run up, you know. So what do you what do you think about that? Like do, do they uh, so if you yeah, so I've written about BTCY three times now. They just published their quarter whatever it is uh quarterly report i think their fiscal year 2022 um you can see in the subsequent events that they've been issuing shares due to convertible debt i think they're the shares are converting around two dollars so anyone getting the conversion shares can drop them in the market at for something and get 100 percent profit i don't know if they're doing that but the likely reason why btcy is so aggressive with the convertible is it's because of the convertible shares i see so yeah it's good to know that so you have how many the, the last list you sent out it must have had like 50 ticker names or something like that um i think it's around 25, 25. i think i need to trim it and kind of make a hall of shame after you know four months yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> pay promotion and the subsequent news isn't kind of relevant too much anymore yeah so i'm kind of narrowing in and it becomes you know, it's becoming a lot to track Yeah, uh, the companies as they keep being added. There has to be some kind of like a time where I kind of cut it off and say, you know, they haven't run anything. They've been on good behavior. Let's get them off the list. Gotcha. Now, do you keep track of like the compensations? Yes. Um, I will start publishing, uh, adding to the spreadsheet how much the paid promotion was and who, who it was um you know, what website it was ran by. Now you, you have many years of doing this. So like, do you see a difference? I haven't tracked it or anything, but do you see a difference of the amount of, pro, uh, they were promoted and like, uh, how that relates to the run-up in the near term and long term? I don't have too much historical data and it seems kind of random that, you know, how, how they work. Uh, it probably depends on how tight the float is and what's maybe being said behind the scenes. Um, some of are like all these discord groups or there's like the discord group, the main channel and like the private channel um, where everything goes on. So I would imagine a lot of that goes on with, with the newsletters. Um, and you can kind of see that some of them are front loaded a, a day or two before the newsletter drops. And then, um, you know, it's sold into it. Like there's, there's weird, you know, five at 8% spikes on, on pretty big volume ahead of the paid promotion. And then it's released the next day. And you're someone selling into it. So someone knows. Someone knows. Um, yeah. Now, who, who do you think pays for these things? You said it's the people, it's like the investors or it's like insiders, a combination or is it it's, some kind of- It's probably a combination of, of holders of the convertible debt to make sure that they can essentially wash it, wash their debt with and get, and get, get, get uh, cash out of it, mm-hmm. make a nice profit. It's probably also the companies paying a, third party so if they hired a third party ir person who then pays the paid promotion gotcha. companies are doing a really good job uh, i guess hiding that they're they're the main source of the funds uh the sec should probably you know take a look into this area and and make sure that if a paid promotion is being ran and a company sponsoring it that it's printed on the paid promotion i think uh we, we know the sec doesn't really do too much uh-huh. And yeah, they so don't. They're worried about busting, you know, some stock traders for thousand dollar trades instead of really cleaning up the markets. Yeah. So like the OTCs, they have a they they kind of flag the the company. I know like on their website it's like, oh, pay promotion is a little flag. Um now there's a lot of listed companies that get get, get promotions now, and there's no flag. There's no way to know unless, unless you have the email, the substack. <laughs> Right, so, right. Actually, there was one last week that was flagged that I that I covered uh it was L- LGIQ. They published a, you know, they, they ran a pretty heavy paid promotion all week through, I think, two or three different websites. You know, they issued a pre- press release at six o'clock on a Friday after, afternoon, Friday night. 
uh, saying that the OTC markets was looking for a statement around the promotional activity. And they wrote a bunch of BS that covered their tracks, um, but there's definitely been an uptick in NASDAQ companies kind of under a $200 million market cap that is a, a really pretty aggressively putting out these promotions. Wow. So um, when was the first, when did you get started with this? Or when did you get started in the markets in general? When, when did you notice that the, there's paid promotions out there? When, when was this like, you know, uh, brought to your attention? I know like Timothy Sykes, that's kind of his MO was finding these paid promotions. Uh, Michael Good, Good Trades is kind of like the master at following these things. Mm. I believe that the guy Guru Leaks is also really good at, at tracking these guys down and being pretty relentless. Um, I kind of got interested in it, I think it was around 2015, 2016, when there was kind of like a biotech pump and dump ring that was publishing on Seeking Alpha under, you know, it was one or two people posting under, you know, five or six different aliases and they were being compensated for it all. They were eventually busted. Um, but that's really when I got interested in it and started adding, you know, the different websites to a, I guess, burner e email address account. So everything gets dropped into one email box. Um, and COVID kind of really, you know, allowed me to have some more free time. So I was spending a lot of free time on it. Um, that's why you would see my Twitter account, say $25,000 new paid promotion under XYZ ticker, uh, compensated parties not disclosed. Um, and it kind of built from there. And then, you know, I saw Edwin Dorsey start writing up kind of a compilation of the different short reports and adding his own commentary on it. And I said, you know, it might be interested to have some kind of weekly, bi-weekly series as these paid promotions are released to kind of gather up all the information and put my perspective, why the paid promotions are being ran, uh, background of the company, did the paid promotion work that day, uh, things of that nature. So I kind of been getting out, you know, one or two a week as, as they come in. I think there was seven paid promotions out last week. This week has been kind of quiet. Uh, so far, it's still Friday. Gotcha. Um, so what was I going to say? Okay. So, um, how often do you see like the, the paid promotion companies? Cause so the last, so a couple of years ago, I, I had the burner email and I signed, I used to Google like wall street tips, wall street, whatever stock tips for me, stock tips, you know, all these keywords, key phrases to, to sign up for these newsletters that run the promotions. And um, I just couldn't keep up with it. I have other things to do, <laughs> you know? It's nonstop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's, so like, that's why I think your newsletter is, is great. Cause like, I guess this, this is like a side hobby of yours and you, you know, so you put it all together. Um, how, so how, how often do you think they, do you see these companies get like sold off and become another one or a no, new one pops up? How, how often are you generating new, you pump and dumps because they keep like morphing. They, you got to keep up with them. The, it's nonstop. Uh, you know, writing the newsletter for one or two or three of them that pop through. And then all of a sudden there's a copper miner, a lithium miner, you know, some $20 million Canadian, probably a scam uh -huh. that's coming. And it's like, yeah. please, you know, staring at the email box, like, please, please stop doing this. Um, I don't think until the SEC or uh, the Canadian regulators kind of step in that you'll ever see it stopping. And, you know, for the one in 20 that really blow up and really work, it's worth for them to do it. Yeah. You know, I watched uh, Alfie, the ticker Alf. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alf. Like they ran that promotion. It was like $3. And I was like, oh, okay, I went to four. All of a sudden it was at 20 something. Um, yeah. And I know my uh, my friend at Bleecker Street Street did a really nice report. And, you know, the executives, I think, have been suspended or put on paid leave one of the one of the executives was fired board members were replaced or resigned um but that was kind of like the real eye-opener like okay so someone is making pretty good money running these it's kind of yeah big it's more for more for me trying to not get in the way of one of those you know that could be you know really big trouble with short position and no way to hedge you know with calls and getting trapped in it yeah um, do you keep track of the ones that are uncompensated, uncompensated promotions? Not really. I, I think there's a lot of other really good people that have been tracking those down. 
Yeah. I, I kind of um, want to focus on on the paid the promotions, paid you know, the uncompensated ones. It's you might have some hearsay, you know, with the compensated ones, I have a definitive number in the email that someone's being compensated for. Mm -hmm. I try to stay a lot of that, stay a lot of that out of that gray area. Now with the compensated, like how, how much of it do you think is real? Cause I, I've always had the feeling like they're not really disclosing all of it. You know, there's other stuff going on. <laughs> and there's always other stuff going on, but yeah. you know, if you're paying 30 to 30 grand for compensated promotion, it, it's probably 30 grand. It's probably not 35. It's probably not 50. It's. Oh yeah. So you want to talk about, so how, how does your patent research come into all this? Did that help you? Uh, it's completely, completely separate. I would say, you know, the patent re where the correlation is, is organizing the information, uh, making sure I'm on databases to get SEC filings, press releases, uh, insider sales, um, making sure I'm staying up on the news. They're, they're, that's kind of the only correlation of organizing the data. So it's completely, I, I, think. I see. So organizing, so it's completely separate. You just have been following the pump and dumps for many years, for a few years. And you're like, oh, let me do this as a side hobby, completely separate from patent. Co to completely separate. I, I yeah. don't work in patents full time. Um, I wish I did. I'm trying to figure out a way to do it. Um, but I've been keeping them separate. Uh, unfortunately, Substack or mm -hmm. I haven't figured out a way to separate the two other than creating two different Substack accounts and two different newsletters, which seems like a lot of extra work. And, you know, if people are interested in reading my work, which they have for the past 10 years, um, you know, they can just delete the paid promotions or they can delete the, uh, the legal stuff and, you know, focus on what they want to read. Gotcha. Um, all right. So now back to the pump and dumps. So what was, what was the craziest pump and dump that you've seen over the years? Uh, definitely that ALF that ran a couple months ago. That was that was really really good. Um, you know, three dollars to twenty something with twenty five thousand dollars spent. That's pretty. That's money that was well spent. I don't know if the insiders cashed out. I can you know take a look through the SEC filings, but that was definitely the best one. Um, I know there's another serial, you know, paid promotion pump number uh, Biosig. Uh, that has raised capital, I think they're twice through Laidlaw or some other you know, third tier broker. Um, shortly after they rate, uh, did the paid promotions and put out a whole bunch of press releases. Uh, interesting, they ran, uh, Biosig had a paid promotion last Friday. They've issued I think, three press releases this week, maybe two last week. I would bet another cash raise is coming out of those guys. Um, it's yeah. fascinating that they're able to do this over and over again. And no one's looking for patterns and saying, Hey, stop with the paid promotions. We know you're going to raise capital. This is, you know, not right for everybody or maybe violating some laws. I, I not sure. So what do you think it is? The SEC is just too tied up catching the big fish that this doesn't really. The SEC is too busy catching the little fish. I don't think these are big enough fish to really go after. Uh huh. And you're speaking about Alfie. So can you go over the timelines for those that, you know, didn't follow it? Uh, can you go over the, the timeline of the promotion of Alfie and like how that played into the, the all-time highs that it did? Yeah, I think it, I, I think what, what happened was they read, they did the paid promotion um, and it eventually became like a meme stock and all the, the discord groups, the, the paid chat groups all jumped into it and it just, caught on like wildfire. The, the paid promotion expired, it kind of stopped. Uh, I know the paid promotions refer to it pretty frequently that that it did very well. Um, but I think it was more of a funk, you know, after the initial paid promotion, getting the stock in, you know, some people's hands, getting it on people's radars, it jumped on into the Discord groups um, pretty quick. I, I'm not sure if the Discord groups were paid. Uh, nothing would surprise me. I have no evidence about that, but, you know, when companies are looking to pump the shares, I, I wouldn't put anything past them. Uh -huh. So you're saying like it became a meme stock because like in like the eighties or the nineties, it was like this TV show called Alf. Is that, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think those are related, but um, yeah, I think it jumped on like it became a meme stock, you know, uh -huh. and caught fire. And when, 
you know, it hit the twenties and sold off. That was, that was the end of it. Um, now, do you see a correlation between the, the, the text message pumps rather than the email pumps, or is it like they go hand in hand? I or? think there's, I think I, I don't, I don't, I don't have a phone number registered with any of these paid websites. That's probably the last thing I need is, is my phone to buzz more with, with paid promotions. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm not sure how frequent the text messages are going out. I would imagine all of the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, I, the I'm time. not sure. I'm not sure what, what the correlation or what they're doing on the text message side. Gotcha. Now I haven't, like I said before, like I haven't updated my email list to the latest one. So I, I have, I signed up a few years ago and I, the, the texts and emails I get now from a lot of them are like totally different than pumping like a pump. It, they, it seems like they sell off their email list to someone else that does something completely different. You know, are they like announcing recent news because yeah, so they announced like, uh, day trading courses now <laughs> oh. or like or like you know sign up for my live trading forex strategies or you know um yeah what so could go wrong just trade forex you go move from <laughs> pump and dumps to forex at 100 times leverage why, why not yeah <laughs> but like the thing is uh yeah so i signed up for that text or that email service because of uh it, it used to say something along the lines of sign up for my uh stock tips and now it's not stock tips. Now it's forex strategy. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know anything about that. I, I would say anyone that is uh, looking to trade forex through some text message <laughs> uh, promotional blast, like good luck. But uh, it, you mortgage yeah, your house not, on that one. Yeah, it's not. No, it doesn't seem very profitable. Very very reliable. But <laughs> um, uh, another one. Uh, what was I going to say? I totally forgot what I was going to say. But um, so how how can people find you on the Substack? And can you? Yeah, follow yeah. me on um, the IP Hawk on Twitter. I couldn't get the original IP Hawk. It's, I think, some British guy that tweeted twice 10 uh -huh. years ago. I'm trying to get the account. Um, but at the IP Hawk on Twitter and iphawk.substack.com or just type in IP Hawk Substack and it'll, Google will, will find it for you. So you have like um, a, a monthly subscription and also like a, a a free one that comes in every like two weeks or something like that or how does that work um so every every saturday or sunday i put out a free newsletter kind of a weekly wrap-up for all the paid promotions that went on for the week a uh, brief description a link back to the, the actual coverage of it for anyone that's interested in in paying for it and i will go through recent filings through the paid promotions any quarterly results any news that might be important i'll, I'll highlight um like i said earlier uh, it's, I have a pretty big list of them and, you know, we'll probably move a few to the hall of shame and kind of give them a grace period that they haven't ran in a while. They've been on good behavior. Um, but I, I release those every Saturday or Sunday. And as the paid promotions come through, I try to do it in real time as possible, kind of same day, or if, if not next day. Great. And, and what other categories do you list or those that don't know? I know you list like the market cap, you list the, the starting date the end date of the promotion, I guess, or like the, the latest? Um, I I do the, the the date, the starting price when the promotion was released that morning, or if it was in midday, kind of what the price was. And, and I've been adding columns uh, for the closing price that, that Friday, the previous week, and the week before, kind of building a trend of how the, how the stocks are doing post paid promotion. Great. Yeah. So it's, that's some great stuff. All right. So, um, yeah, thank you, I, uh, David, for coming on. IP Hawk for coming on the podcast, man. Really yeah, definitely. This was, uh, this was really great to do. Yeah, it's cool. So people can be aware of, of, the, of the, the list that you do. I think it's really, it's a really concise list, very useful. And you also do on top of that for the page description, you do even like a little bit of a deep dive into like some of the filing work, you know? So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's really good stuff. Um, yeah, more people need to know about it, you know, get, get tackled down these frauds, these, these, uh, I, I hope so. I hope, um, yeah, I, I emailed Gary Gensler at his SEC account. We'll see if he ever reads it. I should I don't think he's gonna get with the read receipt to see if it came through. <laughs> he, he's got too much. He's got the Wall Street bets guys. He's got, uh, some Twitter characters from the the AMC apes and the Discord yeah. groups and crypto. Oh All he's got. In China, there's a whole Chinese the slew of, yeah. you know, so. <laughs> yeah, he's been, he's been better than the other guy, though. He makes the other guy look like a chump, you know, with actual 
looking into things and enforcement actions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good to see. I like to see the trend of, of Mr. Gensler. Good stuff. So, all right, IP Aqua, thank you for coming on. You have a great day. Yep. I'll talk to you later. Thank you.